here at Acton Congregational Church. We're glad that you're here. Whoever you are and wherever you may be on your faith journey, you are welcome here and you are invited to this table. For this evening's worship service, we've asked that you bring a few things with you because there are several interactive elements. First, we ask that you bring a candle, also a small bowl of water, and the elements of communion. You'll notice that tonight's worship service does not feature a sermon. Instead, we ask that you listen to the story and that you walk with Jesus and his disciples through the last days of Jesus' life. Tonight's service has three movements. First, a ritual of foot washing. Second, a celebration of Holy Communion. And third, a service of shadows. And now, let us light our candles together, for Christ is with us. The first scripture reading tonight comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Why did Jesus do something so demeaning, so distasteful, when he did not have to? He is the Messiah. It makes no sense for him, of all people, to do something that should be done by the least of all people, not by the greatest. Is not what we expect our Messiahs to do. Unless we've got it wrong, and we do have it wrong still, with our backwards understanding of greatness. And instead, somehow, this is what Messiah means. The first shall be last, and the greatest shall be least and servant of all. But if we are to follow you, Jesus... Does it mean that we must follow your example too? That we must wash the feet of the people whom we would rather ignore or scapegoat or deride? 
must we too become the servants of the least among us, the refugee, the disabled, the homeless, the addicted, the child. Perhaps this is what it was all about, to try and put us in our rightful place, not at the center of our own world, but at the center of yours, God, where we are no longer the most important person, and that we should love other people, all other people, with our whole hearts. I invite you now to dip your hands into your bowl of water and feel the love of Christ wash over you. As the cool water passes through your fingers and glides over your skin, may you feel the cleansing, purifying love of Christ. And as you have been so loved, I invite you now to offer prayers for another, as if you were sharing this life-giving water with them, washing their hands and their feet the way Jesus showed us. Pray for someone, anyone, perhaps several people. Pray that they too feel this life-giving water, this love, this peace. Let us pray. Come now, mighty Spirit of God. Wash us and make us one body in Christ, that as we are bound together in this act of love, we may no longer be in bondage to the principalities and powers that enslave creation, but may know your liberating peace such as the world cannot give. Amen.
reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 26, verses 17 through 30. Listen for God's word. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his finger into the bowl with me will betray me. The, man, the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and gave it to the, to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Friends, this is a night set aside to remember Jesus' last supper, where he shared a meal with his followers, included the one who would betray him and the one who would deny him. You too are invited to this table with all your sins, faults, and imperfections. You are welcomed here to participate in the death and resurrection of our Savior. You are called to this table to be fed and to be forgiven. So we come from the north and we come from the south. We come from the east and we come from the west. Come all who seek mercy, forgiveness, joy, and peace. Come not because you must, but because you may. Come and gather at the Lord's table to share in his last supper. And so, friends, like the disciples, we gather around the table, not just to remember, but to refuse to forget the sacred, holy night. And like the disciples, we hear those sacred words when Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he gave to all those surrounding him and said, this is my body given for you. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, and tonight we remember it and we refuse to forget it. And he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from it, all of you. So tonight, once again, we gather to eat this bread and drink from this cup. And tonight we give thanks for the love of Jesus Christ 
who brings us together to this sacred moment and remind us that through him we have forgiveness of sins and life abundant. Friends, this is the bread of heaven given for you. Eat, all of you. Do this in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, this is the cup of salvation given for you. Drink, all of you, do this in remembrance and thanksgiving for our Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, 
Could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So, leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. <sighs> Judas Peter by Lucy Shaw. Because we are all betrayers, taking silver and eating body and blood and asking guilty, is it I, and hearing him say yes, it would be simple for us all to rush out and hang ourselves. But if we find grace to cry and wait after the voice of mourning has, crow has crowed in our ears, clearly enough to break our hearts, he will be there to ask us each again, do you love me? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that calls the Lord of bliss to bear the heavy cross for my soul, for my soul, to While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those that Jesus put his hands on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting his ear off. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled? Which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At the moment the cock crowed, then P Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times, and he went out and wept bitterly. <sighs> we 
we all have our courtyards, a poem by Anne Weems. We all have our courtyards, those times and places we face like Peter, when we must decide to stand up and say whether we know him or not. Those crossroads in our lives, when we go along with things as they are, or we say, as Luther did, here I stand, I can do no other. We all have our courtyards. Lent is a time to prepare for our courtyards, the time to listen to who he says he is. And he did, you know, he did tell us who he is. He is that one who brings good news to the poor, freedom to the oppressed, sight to the blind. That holy one who said, follow me, feed my sheep. When the morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. <laughs> then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Good Friday, a poem by Christina Rossetti. Am I a stone and not a sheep that I can stand, O Christ, beneath thy cross to number drop by drop thy blood's slow loss and yet not weep? Not so those women loved who with exceeding grief lamented thee. Not so fallen Peter, weeping bitterly. Not so the thief was moved. Not so the sun and moon, which hid their faces in a starless sky. A horror of great darkness at broad noon. I, only I. Yet give not o'er, but seek thy sheep true shepherd of the flock. Greater than Moses, turn and look once more and smite a rock. And when from death I'm free, And when from 
As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Mary Speaks, a poem by Madeline Langle. O oh, you who bear the pain of the whole earth, I bore you. O oh, you whose tears give human tears their worth, I laughed with you. You who when you, your hand is touched give power I nourished you, who turn the day to night in this dark hour, light comes from you. O oh, you who hold the world in your embrace, I carry you, whose arms encircled the world with your grace, I once held you. O oh, you who laughed and ate and walked the shore, I played with you. And I, who with all others you died for, now I hold you. May I be faithful to this final test. In this last time I hold my child, my son, his body closed and folded to my breast. The holder held, the bearer born, mourning to joy darkness to mourn, open my arms, your work is done. <laughs>